Hey there, Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com here, and I'm trying something new out. I'm taking videos that I normally am doing on Periscope, which is a live streaming interactive chat application on my phone, and I'm taking videos, content that I normally have on Periscope, and putting it on YouTube, partly because I think it's good and it's good content to share on there, and also because I would love to get your engagement on YouTube in the comments as well. So you'll see a chat function going up on the screen. It is not a live chat at this point. It's all been pre-recorded, but I still thought it would be good for you to see. So if you're not on Periscope yet, go check us out at Goulet Pens on Periscope if you want to see more of these broadcasts on live. But in the meantime, go ahead and enjoy this one. Um, for those of you who are watching me live on Periscope, thank you. Keep the comments going. This is great. We're going to be recording all of this and putting it on YouTube as we, um, you know, as if it was just a full recording of this. Now, normally Periscope drops off after 24 hours and we lose the video forever. But um, since I'm doing a little more focused review, yes, my son is here with his Legos. He's home from school sick today, so we're just kind of taking it easy. Um, but I'm going to do a review of the Visconti Millennium Arc pen, which has a unique filling system. So these pens, that is a great question. The price is listed on our website, and you can check it out there. And the exact list price is failing my memory right now. Um, Rachel, if you're on right now, maybe you can help me. There you go. $279.20. So you can check that out on our site. Um, so... There are four different pens. There's uh, one that's called a rainbow, which is this look, this rainbow looking one right here. Now these we don't have a lot left. These are all limited edition pens. Um, they're numbered and they're not going to be long. Long. Okay, it's a 349 list price. There you go. Rachel's got it on there. Um, and then there's three pens that are called moonlight. There's a green one, a blue one, and a burgundy one. And the material is really spectacular looking on, on really all of these pens. Um, Daddy, I can't see them. Yeah, just a minute, Joseph. So I'm going to show you just kind of a synopsis of what is going on with these pens, what makes them so unique, and how they fill and all that good stuff. So let me start out with uh, the green one because the green one seems to be pretty good. How heavy is the pen? It's a fairly good weight. I want to say it's like 35 grams, something like that. And yes, there is going to be another blue one coming out. So as I'm holding up all four of them, okay, so we have the rainbow one. And the rainbow has already been out for a couple of weeks. And the rest of them we literally just got in, you know, today and enlisted them today. Um, or maybe yesterday, sorry, yesterday. Um, the blue one, we are not going to have a lot of them. They are going to be gone pretty quickly. And they did not have enough of these. There's only going to be 200 of each pen, but they actually didn't have enough to even make the 200 on the blue one. So they're actually going to be coming out with another blue. It's kind of a blue and white swirl. Uh, I don't have a picture of it or anything yet. It's a couple of weeks away. So that will be coming, but I don't have it on hand. So that'll be coming. Um, but let me go ahead and give you a little tour of the pen. So it's made by Visconti in Italy, and uh, they're headquartered in Florence. And it is a screw cap, push to post. It's a little bit long when it's posted, as you can see here. It has a metal grip section with a little bit of a concave action going on there, which, you know, slick metal grip sections are normally not my absolute favorite, but, <laughs> okay, but my son really likes to uh, show off his truck here, clearly. Um, it does have the number engraved here, and you can't really see it because this is live streaming from my cell phone, but the number is engraved right here on the grip. It's very unobtrusive, though. Now, there's a few things about this pen that make it truly unique. Um, one of them is the nib itself. You can see here the nib is not your typical nib design. It is called their tubular nib. Now, it's made of what they call chromium 18, which is essentially... Uh, stainless steel might be a little different formulation, but it, it is a basically a stainless steel nib It is available in a fine fine medium broad and a 1.3 millimeter stub and What makes this nib so interesting is the fact that it wraps all the way around the feed So you said the section looks more comfortable than a Rembrandt I think it is if you're familiar with the Edison Nouveau Premier which we have on our site um, It's a very similar kind of feel to that and it is threaded, 
but the threads are very shallow. They're not very sharp threads. So me personally, I hold my thumb right on the thread, uh, but it doesn't bother me at all. The nib is a little bit long, and the feed inside is actually very long. The feed, if you take it out, actually goes like all the way back here. I know. Every time I say tubular nib, I want to go like a tubular, you know. Um, but anyway, so there's the nib. And what's really cool about the nib, there's two, there's two benefits to this tubular nib. One of them is that because it wraps so much around the feed, it's not going to have uh, as much of a tendency to dry out as a normal fountain pen nib might when you're uh, just kind of sitting out and writing with it. And the other one is that you, because it's tubular like this, it essentially acts kind of like a straw. And you're able to just dip this much of the ink, uh, sorry, of the pen into the ink up to here, and you don't have to dip all the way up to the grip section to fill the pen. Joseph. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so you're able to dip, yeah, I know. I'm competing with some Legos here. So you don't have to dip the whole thing and get the whole grip section messy and everything like that. It takes a little bit of precision work to be able to actually fill it like that, but that's the case. Now let's talk about the filling mechanism. So the filling mechanism is uh, what uh, Visconti calls their arc filling system, um, which is very similar to the uh, Conklin Crescent filler, if you've ever seen that. I know, right, Joseph, starting off young on the videos here. <laughs> so the way that this thing works is it has a bladder inside the pen, okay? And I don't have a demonstrator version to be able to show you. It doesn't unscrew or anything like that. It's all glued together. So. Uh, you're not able to disassemble the whole thing together, but it has a silicone sac inside. Yes, it does work with the Visconti inkwell rather well. I actually have an inkwell here, but um, I don't have it at, at my table here. So, if you um, can imagine, there's a, a bladder inside that goes all the way here. And then this little uh, arc is connected to a bar that goes across the whole bladder. And when I press it, it pushes down that bladder and it depresses it. And then when I let it go, it will draw ink up into the pen. That's basically the concept of how it works. And then when you're not wanting to fill it, you just take this little ring, you turn it like so, and then you can't press, you can't press the arc down. And that's how it works. So if you're familiar with the old Conklin Crescent fillers, it's a very similar kind of design, similar kind of system to that. That's how it works. So. Um, the nibs are very wet, I will say that. Visconti is kind of known for having very wet nibs, and that's just kind of how they work. Um, another feature on the pens that's kind of cool is it has a spring clip, so it's really nice. Is a bladder easy to replace? I would say no. They're not very user serviceable. I haven't tried taking it apart myself, honestly. Um, they claim that it should last a lifetime. So, um, I know that Visconti will service these if it ever should need it, um, but they say that the uh, they say that the bladder should last you know about a hundred years. So they say, um, yes. <laughs> My son is definitely like all up in the video here. Um, so let's talk about the uh, clip here. So the clip is a little bit different than Visc most of Visconti's other clips because it doesn't have like a big Visconti logo kind of blasted on the side, which some of you might like. But the clip is kind of nice, like so. It's very elegant, very thin. <laughs> Hi, Joseph. Right. Yes. And it has this little screw on the back here that actually moves down as you pull the clip. So it's kind of like you can definitely get a sense of that spring tension. And that clip opens up really, really wide when you uh, do it. So the clip's not gonna bend and all that kind of stuff. You believe every word from Dante now. Yeah, exactly. So when you want to um, you know, put this onto your clothes, you just kind of pinch with your fingers like this. You pull the clip out like that. You can put it in your shirt pocket or onto your clothes like that, and it just clips right on. So it works really nicely like that. Yeah. Yeah, right. exactly. exactly. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You like it? Mm -hmm. I like the rainbow one. You like the rainbow one? Is that your favorite? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I really like rainbows. Cool. Rainbows are pretty cool. So there are two different um, center bands. So on the moonlight, which is what the blue, red, and green ones are all called, it has uh, this kind of like you know etched pattern in the center band here. 
It says Moonlight. It has some like Crescent Moon type logos on here, and it says Visconti on the back. <laughs> and then the Rainbow one has the word Rainbow written on the front. Not that it needs it because it's pretty obvious what it is. And then kind of this like stripy rainbow pattern with the Visconti V on the back. So, yeah. so what does that do? Yep, you just pull on that. That's the clip. So the rainbow one, the clip is a little bit different. The clip has like a double arch going on here. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes right? Right. Exactly. Um, so I, that's a good question. How much ink does it hold? I have filled and measured these pens. They hold 1.7 milliliters in the whole pen when it's completely full. It does kind of look like a Skittles pen, doesn't it? <coughs> yeah, you could say that it's a double rainbow all the way across the sky. Yes. Um, so there is a, you're just like me. That's right. right. You can actually read the chat. How about that? My son's five, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I want to show you. No, I'm five and a half. Five and a half. Excuse me. So I'm going to show you how this pen actually fills. I have a bottle of Needler's Black. So I'm going to try to do it while I'm holding it up in the air here, which is not normally very easy. However, one cool thing about this pen is you can fill it with one hand. So that's kind of neat. So basically, you got to make sure your ring is slid over so that you have uh, the the um, arch arc. Thing it, that can push through the opening and then you just dip it down in there now granted my bottle of ink is pretty darn low but it's down in there and then I just kind of press it down this is a very inelegant presentation here but you just press it let it go for about five seconds or so and press it a couple of times over and over again what is so great is you like it? Okay. There. Now it's filled. Now, when this thing is filled all the way after you first use it, the feed is really long and it's going to be very, very full of ink. So I highly recommend, um, specifically with this pen, because of the tubular nib, um, it has a little bit of a tendency to want to kind of burp and, and drip out on you when you first write with it. Um, so especially the first first time you fill it. So I recommend that you take a paper towel or a napkin or something like this and then just kind of draw a bunch of ink out of it just to make sure you're getting a lot of the excess ink out of the feed. Does my son have a fountain pen? He's only five and a half. Um, he's a little young for fountain pens yet, but I do let him play with mine every now and then. Probably not this one, though. Which fountain pen? This one. People are asking if you have a fountain pen. I don't have one. No, not yet. I don't have one. But you will. But I do have a Lego monster truck that I built. Well, there you go. Why would you need a fountain pen if you have a Lego monster truck, right? Yeah. Boom. Okay. Now Little a... monster trucks are better. <laughs> They're better. Because I like monster trucks and Legos. It's hard to argue with that. Mm -hmm. Hard All to right. argue with that. Exactly. Now I'm going to flip around and show you some writing samples here. Okay? All right. Let's see our beautiful fall tablecloth pattern here. Okay. So just inked it up. This is a uh, fine nib. And the way so, that you can tell it's a fine nib is it has so Daddy, what are you gonna the nib do? size written on the back. Daddy, what are you going to draw? I don't know, buddy. What do you think I should draw? Maybe a monster truck. Monster truck? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ryan is writing with the fine nib. Mark from this company. It is a pretty wet writing pen. Um, it is a, it is a steel nib. They call it their Chromium 18. Um, the broad, honestly, I haven't inked it up yet. I brought it home. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. But yeah, it is very very wet. And the nib is interesting. I don't know how well you can see it. But it kind of turns up a little bit. Daddy, does this look much it turns like up a little bit at the end there. 
So it makes it kind of nice if you want to hold it up a little bit higher. Um, it actually writes a little finer when you hold it straight up. Uh, so let me do some X's here. So if I'm holding it up at a higher angle, it's going to write a little bit finer. If I hold it down lower, it's going to write a little broader. So this is a really interesting aspect of this nib. The nib feels really good. It's a really smooth nib. It's a really and, good monster. Okay. Well, thank you, Joseph. It's a very smooth nib. The flow is very it looks generous. As good as this Lego one, I guess. Well, thank you for comparison. There's Joseph's Lego monster truck, and there is my very terrible monster truck. Okay. So That's again, fair, when you're writing, Daddy. thanks, Joseph. When you're writing straight up, it's uh, a little thinner. And when you're writing with it laying it down a bit, I'm not applying any different pressure. That's purely just the matter of having it at a different angle. So, very interesting. You can see a little more detail here, the pattern on the nib, if my phone wants to kind of focus on the nib. But uh, there we go. Voila. So you can see kind of that engraving. Oh, there you go. You can see the number on the grip now. So you can see a little more detail on the nib Yo. itself. Voila. Daddy, please do not say that's it is a, nice a terrible nib. monster truck. <laughs> okay, it's not a terrible monster truck. The nib is not springy, it's quite stiff. So you're really not going to get line variation by applying pressure. At least you shouldn't on the nib. Daddy, the one thing I will say, writing? the one thing I will say, I'm just drawing some squiggles, buddy. Do they have any other pens with a tubular nib? They do. Um, the Visconti Opera Metal is one that's currently out right now that has a tubular nib. That's the only one I can think of, but I know they have done it on some other pens. I just can't recall You're which. So there you go. So I'm going to show you again um, all four of the pens. Actually, I should really flip it around and show you in more detail. Uh, let's do that. Sorry, I'm going to flip you back around. The Opera Typhoon. Okay. Let me show you. In more detail with the better back end camera. And then, of course, the rainbow one. Not familiar with the Fjord, but yes. Fillers. Yes. Crescent filler is technically a term, a trademarked term from Conklin. But yes, it is it fills in the exact same manner as a Conklin Crescent filler. Visconti calls it the arc filler. So there you go. And then you can see the difference too in the center bands when I'm holding it this close up. It says rainbow on the rainbow one. And you can really get a sense of those clips. And another cool benefit that I forgot to mention, um, so because of the arc, um, it doesn't roll away. So it's not going to roll off your desk, even if you use it unposted. So that's another kind of little side benefit of this. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> if you have any other questions about it, I'm going to be posting this on um, YouTube, probably, pretty soon. Uh, you can ask any comments you want there. You can always email info at gouletpens.com. And that is going to be my video of Periscope putting onto YouTube. And we will see how that goes. Thank you for tuning in. Um, quick question there about the Diamond Shimmer Tastic. We're expecting them uh, in a couple of weeks. Hopefully. I don't have an exact date, though. You love the pens, but Joseph's the star. All right, so I'm going to go here in just a second. But Joseph, do you want to say goodbye to everybody before we go? I say bye. Bye. <laughs> hope, hope you have had a great time with me. <laughs> I hope you liked my monster truck. Mm -hmm. I think that's why everybody was watching. They wanted to see your monster truck. Everybody's saying goodbye. <laughs> He's a natural, right? Are there going to be a Shimmertastic bundle by Diamine? I don't know. Mine. That's a good question. I don't yeah. I, I don't have any word on that. But that's a good question. We're doing a Shimmertastic sample set, so you can get to try all of them. Just small ink samples of all of them.
<laughs> what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning Everything in. Everything is awesome. It is awesome. Yes. All right. High five, buddy. Good job. Everything Good job. Awesome. Cool. Yes. Cool. I'm glad you like the landscape mode. Um, All right. I'll let everybody like get. Yeah. I'll let everybody get back to work. Thanks so much. Bye.